welcome in everybody to another episode of the DNVR Rapids podcast presented by DraftKings and DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code DNVR when you sign up. Welcome in, guys. It's a good day. It's a beautiful morning here in the Mile High City. We're in Studio A. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, a.k.a. Mitchell. I got my guy right here. Yeah, yeah, right I, here. I really wish I was better at air horns because every time I do it, I'm like, burr, 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 burr. scream, 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 scream. <laughs> there, it is. Oh, there we go. We have some Rapids news. We have two potential signings yet to be confirmed by the club. However, they seem to be on their way. Um, we will be talking about those in the second half of the show, but we have a big time guest today. We have joining us live from the East Coast. We have the head coach of the University of New Hampshire men's soccer team, Mark Hubbard. Welcome aboard, sir. Big time. Wow. That's I'm not usually referenced <laughs> like that. <laughs> hey, you hit yeah. the big time now, man. DNVR Rapids pod. It's legit. The number one yeah, Rapids I'm, pod out there. <laughs> at home, my kid says, uh, COVID, so I'm, I'm I'm playing daddy today. Uh, I've got five kids, so whoa! You almost yeah. have a, now you have a five aside of futsal. It's a, yeah, it's a futsal. It's a little bit <laughs> you got futsal. a backline and a keeper at least. Yeah, yeah, we're working. <laughs> on it. I think I've scared them away from soccer. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, so you know, obviously, we wanted to have Mark on today. Um, obviously, the coach of Moist Bombito, the new. Uh, Colorado Rapids draft pick, pick third in the 2023 Super Draft. Um, what was your initial thought, just your first reaction to him going to the Rapids? Obviously, Robin Frazier is a former MLS Defender of the Year. Um, it's a club that developed young talent. I mean, what was your gut reaction to hearing Moise go to the Rapids? Well, gut reaction is, wow, this is incredible for Moise and his family and uh, for our program. And then the other reaction is crap. We got to replace this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, yeah, just a great feeling. We had some of the community out that, um, you know, helped support our program and, uh, with youth, youth camps and stuff that Moise had actually helped out with in the summer. So it's just with my own kids and family there too, it was just a real special moment. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, everyone was really excited here. Defense was uh, questionable last year. Let's say that. That's that's the nice way of putting it. There was some backline errors to, to uh, on the backline for the Rapids last season. Um, uh, today there was some news coming in that there's a backline, like a a guy coming in from Denmark who who does play that pivot in a back three with center backs. What, positionally speaking, you know, where do you see Moise fitting in at the MLS level? back four more comfortable, back three more comfortable? Can he play left side, right side, both, pivot? Like, how, how do you see him developing at that next level? Uh, I think he's someone that's extremely versatile back there. He's got good size. Um, uh, I don't think he's been playing center back for most of his life. So uh, if you've watched any of his, his sort of video and what I think he'll bring is just a uh, – He's got extreme athleticism back there to, to cover ground and, um, I guess, pick up uh, other people's mistakes uh, and some of his own, too. Like, uh, he has just an incredible knack of being able to recover um, and didn't really have to turn on the afterburners a ton, yeah. but uh, he did a couple times, and you're just sort of shaking your head because he's, he's not just, like, running back and um, kicking the ball out of bounds or something. Uh, he's, like, going back and winning the ball comfortably uh, and recovering it and being able to keep possession and start our attack again. So he was playing primarily as a left center back for us, um, even though he's primarily right footed. So left foot looks really comfortable um, and has ability to, to hit long range, um, you know, passes and switch the point of attack. But some of his best stuff is like when he's, when he's on the dribble and on the travel back there and are, is able to sort of break lines with, with dribbling and being able to get out of those type of jams and situations. So I think he has a lot of great versatility to play in a back four or a back three in any one of the spots. Um, doesn't have a lot of um, experience, I would say, as like an outside defender, you know, just being a little bit, uh, taller, um, but certainly has the athleticism and the engine to get up and down there. So as a coach, you're not only uh, helping these players develop as 
players, but all you're also getting to know him as human beings. What are some of your favorite things about Bombito? How is he in the locker room? What's his kind of attitude towards soccer? Yes, I mean he's he's like a, a guy that's maybe a little bit quiet and reserved at first, but like doesn't take long to be like sort of life of the party type of guy um, in a very good way. He's extremely disciplined, uh, support supportive of all all of his teammates, um, but uh, at the same time doesn't take things so so seriously that he's sort of bottled up. I think he's pretty relaxed, pretty relaxed guy, pretty confident guy, and. Um, is just someone to sort of rely on to, to fill that role in the locker room. That sounds a lot like like our qualifications for Mr. Rapid, which is a, a title we dole out. Um, <laughs> future Mr. Rapid future candidate. Future Mr. Rapid candidate. I love to hear that. Um, in terms of, you know, your program, Moise, you know, got to participate in some NCAA tournaments. You guys have found a run of success. And you yourself, um, you know, replacing a coach who had been there for so long, um, what you know? How has he helped you with this program, getting it up to this level that it's currently at now? You know, competing in ter- in national tournament. Yeah, I think what's sort of my backstory is that I was a, a ball boy. I grew up in this town, so I was a ball boy for the team. Like when I was 12, 13, 14. So I like under and went to camps and kind of understood and grew up with the program. So understanding like the the purpose of of what it brings to the community and the state is, is just something that's, I guess, uh, within me. So it's something that always trickles down to the guys. Uh, when we're drawing like two to 3000 people a game, uh, you know, when I first got here, it was like a hundred. Um, so wow. that, I, some of that, some of that stuff is sort of trickled down, but yeah, over the past eight years, I don't want to say, um, I think Moyes fell into a, a good situation. Uh, where our team coming back was extremely experienced, had been to uh, three consecutive NCAA tournaments, four actually. Um, actually, you know what? I, I don't even know. We've been to straight. <laughs> I think it's five. Yeah. If I'm yeah, looking but, at your, you yeah. guys are good. You guys are really good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's catching up to me, obviously. But the, he he fell into a scenario where he complimented our team. Our, our team is consistently top five in goals against shutout percentage, uh, but we're a team that really keeps the ball and builds. And he, he did a great job complimenting that. And he, we were only, he was only here for four months, four and a half months actually playing. So for me to actually have an accurate uh, portrayal of, you know, where he was and where he is now, I just think it, it, it happened so quick. So we, we were able to set him up with a USL2 set up like locally. He worked some camps, got himself acclimated over the summer, which was nice. But in terms of the season, as, as you guys know, college soccer just so quick. So oh, yeah. yeah, before you know it, he was he was being called and <laughs> is here. So um, a good testament to our program. But um, and we're very happy that, that our highest ever draft pick and our first ever GA signing. So just sort of cements us with the other two draft picks this year as a place where players can come and develop not only as people, but uh, future professional players. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. He, you know, he joins a team that has had, you know, Canadian players specifically, you know, Ralph Prizo is another young Canadian. Mark Anthony um, K. Mark Anthony here. K was here until the trade last season. Um, what was that kind of recruiting like, you know, cause right now it kind of seems to be the, the current kind of hotbed for finding young talent in the soccer world. Um, you know, kind of go into to how you sort of found that connection and, and got him to come to New Hampshire. Yeah, I mean, we re- originally didn't find him out of Montreal. Like, uh, it was a Iowa Western Community College connection. We've had a great relationship with them, uh, with Mike Brown um, at Iowa Western. And uh, we've had four guys. And one of our, our goalkeeper who was drafted by LAFC was a, a f- former Iowa Western Reaver uh, is their is their nickname. But uh, so I think, yeah, I mean, it's not like because we're so close to the border, like looking into Canada makes sense um, because we've got Ottawa, Montreal, um, Toronto, you know, kind of all right there. Yep. And even occasionally, like we'll venture up to New Brunswick and see what's what's cracking up in in that area too. So I think that those, this obviously with the success that Canada's had recently with getting to the world cup and playing young players and how they've done in the college system here in the U S just bodes well for, for us as being sort of a good platform um, to continue to recruit those, those guys. But I think there's a lot of untapped players in those larger cities that I, I had named earlier. 
Have you been able to talk to Moise a lot lately since he got to Colorado? Have you like been in contact with him? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, you know, texting um, here or there every other day. You know, I think one of Moise's biggest things, like I wasn't able to work on him with the bunch was just sort of his tactical positioning back there. Um, you know, I think he obviously has really good athleticism and can cover a lot of ground. So like he makes up for some of those little mistakes in terms of angles and positions and people don't even really pick him up because he's, he's uh, cleaning it up. Uh, but I think he's, he's finding like he's, he's fine athletically, uh, but being able to, um, uh, just be a little bit better tactically with his decisions is, is something that he he's already mentioned that um, with the speed of play, it's it's something he's trying to learn quick and, and pick up. That's good, man. He's working with the MLS Defender of the Year here in Robin Frazier, how Mitch said earlier. Um, I'm sure he's going to get a lot of a little bit more one-on-one -on -one coaching. I think the Rapids are really high on him as well. Um, you as a coach, what's one thing you could tell Bombito right now that you're okay with saying public? Like, what's one message that you want to get across to him? Um, no, just that we're, we're really proud of him. And, um, you know, we hope that, uh, you know, he, uh, hits the ground running and does well, but doesn't forget about his, his education <laughs> and being able to, to complete that, um, at some point, uh, I think that's really important to him and his family throughout. It was something we really weighed throughout the process as he was getting a lot of momentum pretty early this fall and, um, just really proud of him and, you know, look forward to tracking him and, and seeing how he how he does in his first year. Do is there any you know quirky or, or you know locker room routine or pregame routine or maybe some hidden talent that we might not know about him that he that he can bring to the team? Uh, he's a pretty decent dancer. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. let's yeah. go! Anyone anyone is a better dancer than me, but uh, there, there's some <laughs> stuff on our on my on our social media from camps from soccer sphere. Uh -huh. uh, games that you can find that we posted this summer with with dance offs that he was involved in. So always, oh, always had a good good time with that with the guys and with the kids. We'll have to go find that and retweet that on the Rapids account. We might be having a dance battle at a Burgundy Affair this year. Oh, let's go! Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. It's, uh, it's we're really happy that we got to make this happen. Yeah, thanks a lot for having us, and uh, you know, really look forward to seeing how he does and following the Rapids this year. And hopefully we can check in uh, after he gets a nice little run of games with us. So yeah, maybe you'll come Love in that. for his first game in the. Maybe you'll come in for his debut for the Rapids, and we can have you on set do this whole Let's thing. Let's go. Right. Love I it. love that. All right, we'll you catch you. Ask my wife first. So. <laughs> <laughs> love it. All right, we'll All right. We'll, we'll hopefully talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, Mike. take care, guys. All right, Mark Hubbard, man. Yeah, great guy, dude. I, really nice. Gave us a lot of nice little tidbits that I was not expecting. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, great. I mean, he's a great coach. People, everything I've heard from him, things I've read, people really like him. Well, should we do some ad reads? I think we should. We've got to pay the bills. We have to pay the bills, and we're going to pay the bills by talking about the homies at DraftKings. NFL playoff action continues. We're one step closer to Super Bowl 57. And for the NFL Divisional Round, check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped up, same game parlays. Boost your NFL winnings with each leg. You add up to 100%. Um, what, uh, what game are you looking forward to most this weekend? Oh, man, it has to be the Bengals one, right? I yeah. love Joe Brr. Joe Brr. Joe Brr. Um, Obviously, Dwayne is going to be invested on the other side. of. He would call it the Bills game, I think. I'm calling it the Bengals <laughs> game. You can clearly see why he's going to win. Uh, if I was throwing a same game parlay, I would probably take um, a Diggs touchdown, a Chase touchdown, and maybe the over. Would be my guess. Off the top, you, just off the top of my head. Joe Mixon touchdown? I think that's... I don't... Yeah, maybe. I think, maybe. Mm, we'll it see. is going to be cold, probably. I don't know. Um, like he said, you mean the Bills, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code DNVR. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL division round and get 200 free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code DNVR. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And we are also... Ooh, we got two new ad reads today. This is great. Our newest partner, a very cool partner, it's Jive Hive. 
Let's go. Let's go. That's a scream, 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 scream. <laughs> uh, Jive Hive is a virtual dispensary on wheels. That is nice. I hate driving in the snow. Having a virtual dispensary is elite. You can order pizza. You can fire up Netflix and order something recreational from Jive Hive. Their website, jivehive.com. Please check the areas they serve. They are working on expanding their service area right now. Um, enter your address in and see if you can get it. They are um, all around the metro area almost. They're getting there. They're working yeah. on it, especially those places that don't have storefronts. It's cool that Jive Hive is able to deliver to you. Um, convenience, pricing. There's no brick and mortar store, so there's a lower customer cost. Um, there is also privacy and concern and security that if you want to keep it on the low that you're getting some, you know, you don't want to. You don't want your neighbors. You don't want to go hand over your ID, at, at, yep. you know, at, at a dispensary or see, see, see you know, see, like, it, like, you know, we used to go over to Light Shade and you park there and you see someone getting out of the car if you're driving down six and you don't want to do that. Oh, you my know, parents would be pissed if they saw me there. See, yeah, so exactly. It it's great. perfect for you. Yeah, don't tell them. You're just, you know, telling the internet. That's hilarious. Yeah, they, they don't watch my show. <laughs> Um, look, I mean, it's all from the privacy of your own home. Avoid driving through bad weather and snow. And if you're already partying and shouldn't be operating heavy machinery, which believe it or not, a car counts as heavy machinery, um, <laughs> you know, you're good to go. You just order from Jive Hive. Um, you know, they got you covered. Um, visit jivehive.com. That is J I V E H Y V E.com and get your order delivered the same day or schedule a delivery window. We'll be there to say hi and head over to jive5.com, enter your address, and find out if they can deliver to your door. They're now serving Aurora, Greenwood Village, Monument, Fountain, and various areas of El Paso County. That's jivehive.com, J-I-V-E-H-Y-V-E.com. Um, love it. These guys are awesome, man. Just uh, They're our newest sponsors, and shout out to them for sponsoring us. All right. Should we talk about it? Moist Bombito, or do you, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, you're right. We'll save those. We'll save the news. We're going to tease them a yeah, little bit. We'll we, tease it. We'll tease it. We Let's need go to moist. talk a little bit moist first. Yeah, we need I to mean, get a little bit more moist before, oh, we, before we get what fully what drenched. <laughs> 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 it is funny. Rapids, you know, wet, moist, I guess. There's some, we'll work on, we're workshopping. It's, you know. A work in progress. It's a room. It's a writer's room. We're working yeah. on it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, so obviously he's the number three pick. Today you hear the news of a, another center back coming in. You have Wallace, you have D. Will, you have um, Kata Bubakar coming back from injury. You Gus. have Gus, who I thought had good moments, obviously had some bad moments, but physically and profile wise, you see him trending upwards. Um, you Chacon. also have Chacon, yeah, dude. I mean, and and Keegan can slide into center back, um, although at <laughs> with the state of the outside back room, you probably don't expect that any Beta soon. Short can kind of slide yeah, in into the center back if he has too. to. Um, the room is stacked. So what is I mean, number one to me, it's it's camp, right? Like show out in camp, yeah, right, and and rely on the physical profile that that Hubbard was telling us about. There's not a lot of big guys on this team in no. the defensive. He's line. one of the bigger guys, exactly. So I think that's something he really has to take advantage. Um, I'm not in that Rapids room. I don't know what Pork is thinking, um, but it feels more like he's gonna need some time to develop. He's going to need a little bit of time to get acclimated to a faster game. Um, we did see it a lot. We got to watch a little bit of tape on him. And he uh, did, always didn't, uh, wasn't always positioned correctly. And he had to chase down his, his man, which it's fine in college because he's bigger, faster, and probably better than a lot of those guys. But it's not the same professionally. I mean, you already heard him talking about it, on, and it's been camp for a week, right? Exactly. And you already hear about how fast the game is compared. I mean, he was playing yeah, at a Juco level to a year at D1 and a jump to MLS. The, just thinking about, you know, what, a year ago he was at Iowa Western and think of the jumping competition. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you're marking Diego Rubio. Yeah, dude, nobody Jonathan wants to mark Lewis, Diego Rubio. <laughs> right, like you have guys who with, who with burners, Max, right? Like Ca Cabral, dude. Cabral, Whether oh, you yeah. can finish or not, like he's Calvin fast. Harris, yeah, it's like, like these guys, like you are walking into it compared to the level he was at. Correct. Um, the thing that intrigues me the most, and he talks about it, is being able to not just clear the ball, right? Yep. Recover the ball, initiate the offense immediately. When you have an offense like the Rapids has, 
with those absolute speed demons on the outside. Being able to quickly recover on defense and get that ball going the other direction is what opens up those guys. It's what opens up those wings and lets those playmakers get the ball going forward. It's breaking the lines. It's one of the key parts of playing soccer that you need to, you need to be able to break the lines, especially in a soccer system that's coming to coming to America that's very implemented in Europe where they do a lot of high pressing as soon as they lose those ball. And it's starting to become a lot more different. It's becoming like that a lot in the MLS. So you got to be quick with your feet. You got to be able to turn around and get the ball into the offensive side. And Bombito reminds me a lot of Danny Wilson in that aspect, where when he does play, when he does get the ball, he breaks the lines immediately and he starts the offensive play. And I'm, that's something I'm really excited with. He did play midfield for a lot of his career, and he made the transition to center back in the last year or so. And you can really tell with his footwork. It's going to be key. I mean, you know, with with turnovers on that back line, bad pa- lazy passes, almost worse than bad passes, were just like lazy passes. Having a guy with the ball at his feet like that, I think, is is definitely a long term solution, right? I do not see him, especially with the Maxo pickup, assuming that it goes through. Yeah, uh, I don't see him compete. You know, maybe U.S. Open. He comes on as a sub, U.S. Open Cup, in this nation. You know, like yeah, maybe you see a substitute appearance on an off day. Who knows? Maybe he comes in and dominates. Like it's possible. Yeah, right. You, you like, see, it he's all the on time. A, a clear upward trajectory. Yeah, and injuries are also a factor. And I'll knock on wood. Um, but you did see it last year with a lot of uh, the Rapids. They, Danny Wilson missed a lot of time. Lala's got yellows, and then Jack also got injured. And you can start seeing that the Rapids are starting to build that depth. It's not just depth. It's not just bodies. It feels like they're starting to build actual, have actual players that can contribute almost immediately to this team. I'm I'm no longer as scared as last year if we brought in Gus or Kata. I even though I really do like these guys, I I don't think they were at the level yet. Competition breeds breeds better players, and when you have almost nine center backs, it's gonna make it so much easier for you to be. For you to create different lineups, to have a three line, a four line, and start changing things around. I'm so curious. It's like it's really hard for me to say what it's going to be, right? Because right now three makes the most sense. I think until you look at how many midfielders and attackers you want to get on the field, right? Do you want to commit one more guy back like that, right? Like that's you only get eleven spots, right? You have to have a keeper. Okay, so now you're down to ten spots. You're going to put half of those defenders with how many attackers and midfielders you have in there, right? Yeah. And it just, like, adds to that problem of what the hell are they going to do? <laughs> it, 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 it does feel like that, right? Like I have up, no clue. I wonder if they're going to start playing Mambito a little bit more in the midfield, if they see him a little bit more outside, like, like a, of a pivot six. Like, uh, he did play that a lot of his career. Learning from one of the best. And Jack. Yeah. And then they also have um, Ch- Daniel Chaco, and that is basically the same thing. As Bombito, yeah, they play very similar. The only difference is that Chacon has a little bit ball, less ball skills, and it's a little bit, it's not as quick. So I think that they're they're starting to find a type that they like. They're starting to find somebody that they're trying to implement. I think they saw what Danny Wilson did in 2021, and where he should have been in the nomination for Defender of the Year. And I think they want that same style of player. They want somebody that can break the lines. They want a deep line playmaker. And I think Bambito fills that role really well, and it's just going to take a little bit of time to get him acclimated to the speed of the game. It's the hardest. It's the hardest thing in every sport, I think, yeah. is because there's just such a talent disparity from level to level, right? When it's only a small percentage of the level you're at will be playing at the next level, it's really hard to measure that. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, you know, at New Hampshire, which is as good of a program, you know, I mean, like it's one of the best programs out there, right? Yeah. Like they go to tournaments. They're a good program. You're not seeing MLS level guys. On a yeah. day-to-day basis, right? And now all of a sudden you're jumping into, you know, he's if he's marking Cabral in camp, that's a guy who was in the PSG Academy, right? So that guy's seen, like, levels above what he has faced. And it's going it, to, the, the learning curve will be steep. That doesn't mean he can't, you know, reach the top of that learning curve. Yeah. I mean, you've seen it with other draft picks before. Like, there's my favorite example, even though I hate him, it's Walker Zimmerman. Yeah. Draft pick, dude came in and he balled out and now he's part of that USMNT squad. It's not far fetched to say in five years, six years, that half Bombito be one of the starters for the Canadian national team. 
I don't think it's that crazy because you've seen that Canada has been willing to reward the players that are actually good, even though they're young. No matter where they came from, they're always willing to reward. Tejan Buchanan is another example of that. Yeah, man, you know, and I kind of hate on the draft in terms of like producing actual yeah. guys. But the more you think about it, there are quite a few, you know, there's guys in the in in mm. top five European leagues that were McAllister just moved to the top five European yeah. league. So, you know, obviously the same thing is going to happen for Moise Bombito and the Rapids picked a future all star. So there you go. Good job. Good job, Porig. Um, we're going to get into some Porig news here in a sec because the homie is cooking, cooking. Would you cooking. say cooking? Man, dude is bringing the flames today. And you yesterday, smell that? smells like some good home cooking, dude. What would a rapid cooked smell like? Oh man, camp food is usually like what chili, something chili like that. Like that. Maybe some steaks. Steaks, love that. Yeah, fish. Carne asada. fresh fish, fresh from the river, yeah. from the rapids, from the pizza. Whoa, let us know what you think. Um, all right, let's talk about the homies at Shady Rays real quick. Uh, kick off the new year with new gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Race have you covered for the sun to the slopes with premium polarized shades, customable snow goggles, and much more. They're an independent sunglass company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, which... I would do for sure. That's this is like the they might as well call this the Mitch rule. I lose sunglasses all the time. I break mine. I don't break them because maybe because I have glasses and I get so scared of breaking them, but I'll set them down somewhere and forget. Um, you know, what are you going to do? Too much Jive Hive. Um, <laughs> Too much Jive Hive. <laughs> Cross sponsorship, man. We're in the uh, meta now. <laughs> If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. If you don't love them, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the new year. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code DNVR. Visit them in store at Park Meadows Mall for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. That's a lot of five-star reviews. I wish we had 200,000 five-star reviews. We're getting there one day, man. Rapids in five years. 2026 Rapids. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. What a goal. I'm speaking into existence. Let's go. (laughs) Okay, so Rapids Twitter glorious two mornings for us waking up at five in the morning apparently has benefits in the gym getting swole my guy let's not go. there yet man i'm just sore that hurt a little bit actually <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get there though um yeah look uh we woke up to to news of irish international connor ronan two days ago um who he played on wolves he literally has one minute of premier league action this season um but he played time at St. Oh, God, now I can't think of the name. St. Mirren? St. Mirren in the Scottish Premiership. Um, Blackpool, I think he played And as then well. Blackpool in League One in England. So, you know, we're not talking. A he pre- doesn't have a ton yeah. of top five experience, but he has a lot of playing experience in very, very professional and veteran leagues, right? Those aren't, those aren't development leagues as much. He's right? not those an are guys Premier just, League guy. Right, yeah. right. He hasn't shown that yet, but... You know, League One and and Scottish Premiership, you're not going against 18 year olds. These are professional players who have had careers who just aren't at a certain level, right? Like now, obviously, a lot of young guys start there or get loaned there or whatever. No. But this guy has seen real action against real soccer players, um, and God, man, he scores bangers. I the comparison is really easy to make with Jack Price on him. Yes, really, really easy because you're like, oh. Wolves. Yeah, Wolves. And then yeah. you're like, oh, center midfielder. Like, they played eight minutes together at Wolves, actually. Yeah, they like th- they know each other. If you actually go to uh, Connor Ronan's Twitter, mm-hmm. he's followed by Jack Fries. Oh. So they, there's a relationship there. And I'm going to say this. There was a lot of like, like we don't know yet. Like, what's going to happen? And first of all, before we actually get any further, I want to preface this that these are rumors. Uh, right. the Unconfirmed club, by the club. Yeah. Until the club confirms it, we're going to... These are still rumors. But... If you look at their stats, man, their last year before jumping to the MLS, their advanced statistics are really similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connor Ronan actually has more goals and assists than Jack Price. Mm-hmm. And Jack also didn't play in the Premier League as much as you guys want to say he did. He didn't. He played in the championship. Yep. Like, 
and again, the championship's still a little bit higher level than than the Scottish Premier League, but it's not it's not the Premier League. So when I say let's compare them, it's actually a good comparison because they played at similar levels. They played similar roles on those teams, even if it was on loan or in a different or in a different division. Yeah, look, I don't think the MLS is going to be too big for him. I don't either. I, like that's not a worry for me at all in terms of level of competition, right? Like he he will be able to physically get to where he wants to go. You know, I mean, if he runs into a great defender, I mean, there's good defenders in this league, yeah. but but not named Walker Zimmerman. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my point is, is like, you know, we talk about Moise and, and hopefully that he can grow into a specific role, right? Yeah. Ronan is just a matter of earning minutes over guys like Acosta, Max, Goal Bassett, maybe. Jack. Jack even Jack, right? that's like, it. These are guys who have earned minutes. You know, Max yeah. maybe a little less, but yeah. clearly uh, the investment is going to earn him minutes alone. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, he's he has probably a slightly better professional track record better you know more like a better resume than than a max but yeah. i think they come into the mls in about the same position a little bit more established yes. maybe like not better more established more yeah. known commodity correct because he is a little bit older um and again not to harp too much on the jack comparison but jack moved over here when he was 25 rowan yeah, interns 24. 25 yep. in march yep. it's like not, not that much of a difference yeah um i do trust their scouting a lot man i think the rabbits have been able to like really look at what they want and what they want their players to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you could say I'm a homer. You can say all this all you want. But I feel like Ronan is going to be in an immediate impact. Somebody you can immediately throw into the pitch and is going to show why he deserves to be a starter. Like, I really don't have a lot of doubt on that. Man, if he comes in and proves he's a starter, that's like the best problem you can have. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> now you got... A Brazilian wonder that was named a Brazilian wonderkin. Yeah. And Max, you have Cole Bassett, you recalled on loan. You got Gavon that could also play those roles. You got Acosta in the back. You have the young guy, Ralph. You got Ralph Priestling. We when were you, talking on Twitter about this, right? Yeah, it's like, like there's like a current crop where it's like, okay, you have Cole Bassett who, you know, he's here now, but clearly has shown interest over overseas, uh, right? Like you don't know how long-term Cole will be as a rapid. You have Jack Price who... You know, is on the other side of his prime. I mean, still in his prime, but yeah. on the you know on on the back end of his prime, you have Acosta, right? Like these are established guys for right now, right? They're going to yeah. get the bulk of the minutes. They're going to play in the highest pressure situations. But then you can have this young core where it's Max Preso and Ronan, where going forward, that's like that's your that's a three man midfield right there that covers all bases. Tell me, like if you put in Ralph, uh, Ronan. And who was the other one? Max. That, and Max, all in on, um, or like Bassett or whoever you want, in an Open Cup game against the uh, Rapid uh, Minnesota 2 in a U.S. Open Cup match. Who are you taking? Mm. I'm, I might take the Rapids there because of yeah. that. Just if you like that midfield is nasty. Like we've seen, like, and it's not trying to overhype these players, but you've seen what Ronan can do. The Scottish Premier League is nothing to sneeze at. No, not at all. Uh, Ralph Priestle, when he did they come in, they get Champions League spots. I mean, exactly. That's like, yeah. You come in and then you play Ralph Priestley. You've seen what he can do with the Rapids. He goes in and he's an absolute dog. He wants to prove himself. Got that dog. And then Max is also Let's just go. a baller. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Max is a straight yes. up baller. Like yes. you've seen that he developed into that eight that the Rapids wanted last year, and you saw him really grow into that role oh, little God, by little. That down the stretch, man. I I am so sold on Max down that last month, man. He was awesome. So awesome. I'm just saying, like, if you guys want to be negative or like we don't know yet, that's fine. I'm, I'm not gonna tell, I'm not we gonna tell you yet. how to fan. We have no like, idea. Yeah, and if, I'm not gonna tell you guys how to fan. But this is the this is the time where you can dream, where you yeah. can look at potential, where you could actually say, hey, this is possible because of this player has shown this in the past. Terms too. I mean, terms. This you know, my opinion on this move could change drastically, just on terms alone. Yeah. That being said, it's not my money. I was about to say, like, it's not our money. Like, <laughs> like, go ahead, write the check, man. I don't care. Um, it's Kroenke's money. We'll spend yeah. it, baby. We have plenty of <laughs> cap room, too. It's not like our cap room is like in right. a crunch. It's right, like and an extra international slot, which goes into the, both this signing and this signing we'll talk about here in a second. The extra international slot, courtesy of the Mark Anthony K trade to Toronto on top of the million in GAM and Preso. Um, it's, you're starting to look rosy. So. I think that was still a good trade. I saw, I think it was Jared Geisler from the C38 podcast was like, I'll never see that being a good trade. I think it's already a good trade, but that's just me. Um, let's get into the next signing. 
But first, let's. Uh, I got some ad reads because I was kind of reading the wrong ones earlier. That's okay. We'll get into these ones right now. Game time. Hottest new ticket insight makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. Ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you never thought you could? 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate. Four seats at a concert. It's possible with the Game Time app. It is the biggest last-minute price drops that can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. You can go sit, I don't know, like right at the uh, right at midfield, right behind the goal. C38 tickets are probably for sale there, too. Who knows? Maybe. So a lot of good tickets. Uh, uh, right next yeah. to C38, and you can sit down and still be kind of part of it? Yeah. like Which, a, like, you know, come on, sitting and down. like five, like, ten bucks at most? Fifteen? Twenty? Yeah. Um, you will find the best deal on, uh, this season on Rapids tickets through game time. It is created by the fans and for the fans, and it guarantees the lowest price. If you love DNVR, you'll love game time. Best way to support us is buying tickets through the link in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the game time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. Let's also, of course, I mean, they're my homies, they're your homies, they're our homies, everyone that supports us. It is Illegal Pete's. Um, and we are talking about New Year's resolutions and their healthy options. Are you on a new diet for the new year? Well, quit pushing it off because Illegal Pete's has what you need. Endless options of fresh ingredients that can fit almost any diet uh, or dietary restriction. It's a no-brainer, right? That's keto or vegetarian, vegan, um, anything like that. You can uh, eat Pete's for the health of it. Check out any of their 10 Colorado locations for happy hour 3 to 6 p.m. every day. No happy hours for you this month. Try out a refreshing Hoplark Citra at any Illegal Pete's location. It's everything you love about an ice cold beer, except it's friendly to dry January. If you have these resolutions, Pete's is the spot. Uh, Mitch's Pete's tip today is... Eat Pete's? <laughs> you should definitely just go eat Illegal Pete's. I mean, breakfast burritos on the weekend when it's lunch and breakfast at the same time with the shredded beef and the queso. That's the move. Mm. Bang, bang, bang. Um... Also, I want to talk about... We got ad reads on ad reads on ad reads. Well, I kind of read the wrong line earlier. It's okay. It changed We're... the color from red to blue, and I had red. It, it's fine. Um, We're good. <laughs> look, Free advertising. Happens, cool. Man. Look, they're all our partners. We love them all. Um, we have to talk about Green Mountain Dental. They are the OG partner, um, and it's something that we love to see, right? I mean, we're all about building community. Um whether that's listeners, partners, players, teams. Um, and Green Mountain Dental has been a, an OG partner of ours forever. They are huge Colorado sports fans. They've been a supporter of DNVR since the beginning. We've had countless fans and our own staff convert to Green Mountain Dental and never look back, located just 15 minutes from downtown Denver. In Lakewood, CSU alum Dr. Ben and his team have you covered from general dentistry like cleanings, orthodontics such as removing those pesky wisdom teeth and everything in between. Uh, go down to Green Mountain Dental right now. Tell them that DNVR Sports sent you. You get a $300 discount on full orthodontics treatment for new patients. If you mention DNVR Sports, you get a free set of bleach trays. That's a $350 value with a new patient cleaning exam and x-ray. Lastly, for all the hygienists out there, Green Mountain Dental's hiring full and part-time positions are available. They are willing to work through your schedule as well as offering a great benefits package with healthcare and PTO to make an appointment or find more information, check out their website, greenmountaindentalgroup.com. Today, there we go. I hit all the ad reads. You like that? We hit more than we had to, which is really nice. Hey, that's a sounds like a b -b 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 bonus. Let's go. B -b 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 Let's go. <laughs> okay, so so obviously the news, and this is, man, yesterday was awesome waking up to all that, but then like I was getting up early. I have an 8 a.m. class down at Metro. And I was up super early. I was making breakfast, get my coffee going. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, we're doing this now. Like, yeah. Oh, we're doing this. We're doing this again because, and uh, you know, I'm sorry if I, I I haven't watched that video yet because I was in class. The one that you put up, it is, um, from Brondby in the Danish league. Um, not confirmed again. I'm going to keep saying this, right? Although Fabrizio really gets sores, but it's still he, not confirmed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if Fabs, he wasn't the first two. Like, let's... Yeah. He will, I forget the other reporter. It was name. a Danish reporter. Yeah, yeah, I'll credit to him. But Fabrizio says it. Andreas Maxo. Is that how you say it? Maxo? Andrea Max, Maxo, yeah. Maxo. Um, it's the O with the line. I don't know what the O with the line means. I Googled um, it, and that's what it said it was. So Okay, we'll cool. We'll go with that. Perfect. So. Yeah, Andreas Maxo, um, a center back. Um, he was their 2020 player of the year. They won the league title in 21. Um, he has played over 2,300 minutes in four of his last five seasons. He turns 29 in March, so dead center of his prime. This seems like a great trade or a great uh, acquisition. Yeah, I'm all in. Like, I really am. 
Like, this dude is a fan favorite for a reason. I've only heard positive things so far about him. To be fair, Ronan, too, I've only heard positive things. But there's a guy that seems it's going to come in, bring some leadership to that back line, and it feels like it's going to establish the pecking order, which it felt a little off last year. I, I, yeah. I felt like they were pointing at each other, like, and nothing against, like, I get you guys are trying to talk to each other. It's not saying that they there was no leadership. It's just it felt like it was more appointing than taking responsibility at times. And I feel like that's something the Rapids are missing a lot in that back end. And I'm really excited to see what he can do with that back line. Look, I, we said it a million times, if not more. There's no spot safe on that back line. No. We're Keegan. <laughs> okay, you're right. One uh, in spot. the center, I meant. Yeah. Sorry, not on the whole back line. As in, in that center back room, I'm not pointing at anyone and saying you are a for sure day one starter. Except for Maxwell, I'm just not. maybe. Maxwell might be the only one. Now I am. Yeah, like that is the only one. Else. Now I am. This guy This guy is, you do not go get this guy. Have him come from Denmark mid-season. Right? So he's already played almost 1,000 minutes. Yeah. And that starts in August, right? September. So this guy's already played a ton. He is going to be in form. He is walking in to me as a for sure starter. The question is, is he a for sure starter? Three center backs, two wing backs. Or is he going to take one of the two center back spots? What I mean, gut to me is put three center backs back there, even if that means Keegan slides inside. That's my yeah. first gut. What's your read? That's kind of what I feel, too. It feels like it's going to be a 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, there's still rumors out there. There's still a lot of talk that they want to left back. No confirmation either way. There's We don't know who it is, what they want. We've just heard people talk about it. But if they don't get that left back, they have options now. Nicholson can play that left wing back. Galvan can play that left I'd wing love back. I'd to see Galvan start at the left wing back with the back three. Exactly. And it's just, it look, it seems like it's trending that way. And I'm a little disappointed because I'm not a big fan of that formation, me personally. But if Frazier makes the work, he makes the work. He It kind of feels a lot when they had Trusty back there. And yeah, they had to play yeah. their best players. They had that's to, the that's you just said it. That's the sentence. Exactly. It feels a lot like that. It feels like we have too many good defensive players. We need to get them all on the pitch, and get them playing. And it feels like it's going to be the five back turn into a three four three kind of formation. You got to get your best eleven out there. Right? Exactly. And to me, that puts Galvan on the field for sure. Yeah. Right, because you have too much invested in the in the wings for me to say you're taking one of those outside wing spots day one. Yeah, right. Now, could he slide up there and take one of those spots if they underperform like they did last year? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Right, but I think to start off, put him back at the wing back. Right, let yeah. Keegan and Maxo and Wallace, Danny, whoever, Akeda, Akeda, uh, Gus, fight for that other center back spot just to see what starts. Right, none of this is set in stone. I mean, you saw yeah. how much those lineups changed throughout the year for the Rapids. Um, but to me, it's just like I just want to see the best guys out there. Yeah, from day one, and it really does feel like Maxo is one of the best guys out there. It feels like he immediately <laughs> yes, comes and brings sure. a level of quality that it. Re he reminds me a lot of Danny Wilson when he yep. first came in when uh, twenty twenty one. Not when he first got here, but 2021, that great run. He reminds me a lot of that. Somebody that's a leader is going to be very... It's going to just tell you how it is. And yeah. I feel like Danny lost out of that a little bit last year, and it wasn't because of him. I really do think it was just I think culturally there was just something off. Yeah, there was something going on there. We don't know what it is. Yeah, and, and this screams... So between the Rona move, this move, the Bombito draft pick, it does seem like they were not just trying to find athletic multiple position guys, but they were trying to find locker room guys. Yeah. Leaders. And maybe not, you don't have to come in and be the leader. Just be we a just, leader. Like, there was enough disruption in that locker room last year that it couldn't be a cohesive group. Exactly. There was frustration with each other. And that's not, I don't think that's going to be a thing this year. I think that is gone. I do not see a head case on this team. It feels like this team is building towards accountability. They want accountability for the coaching staff and for each other. It's not just a me league anymore. They want to build a team. And it, when you talk to Cabral, I got that sense from him too, that it's us. When you talk to Calvin Harris, I got that sense, us. Yes. Cole Bassett came in and it's like, I want to become a leader. I want to be a part of the locker room, get to know everybody. Again, us, not us. me. Yeah. And I feel like that's something they're really trying to bring in right now. They're trying to get it through everybody's head that it's an us, not me. 
And I'm really excited about that because this team played the best in 2021 when they got the number one seed when it was about all about us, not me. It does feel like the we, right? And not yeah. the me. Um, that is the, the cheesy uh, coaching quote of the day there. Um, uh, Yaya, what do you got to plug for us, my guy? Before we go, can we talk two small things? Of course. Diego Linus was rumored to come to the Rapids. Friend of the pod, Brendan uh, Plone, said that's not happening. Yeah, uh, it, might, it it felt like when, when Rapids were included in that list that it was just to like an agent adding adding suitors team. on that. Like, well, we talked to the yeah. Rapids, and I'm sure the Rapids were like, yeah, we're not in that. That's an expensive move. But I will say something. Rapids were never involved in these, not even like as a throw-in team. Right. Never before. So having them um, even be thrown in I mean, makes me feel like they kind of just inquired. And it's like, hey, how's, how's Diego doing? Like, what is he looking for? And when it was too much, they're like, ah, oh, not right now. Thank you very much. Because they've never been thrown in in those sort of conversations, really. It's <laughs> it's just interesting that the Rapids were named with FC Dallas, who yeah. was known to bring in big names. Houston, who was known to bring big names. And then the Rapids, who are not known for that. It feels like it was just kind of... It, yeah. it feels like a throw-in, of course. But it also feels like they're maybe just like, hey, how's Diego doing? Like, well, how much is he kind of out? Just kind of inquired about what was going on. And when they got the price, they're like, no, thank you. We're okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. What's the other small thing you want to talk about? Goalkeepers, real quick. Yeah. They've been rumored with two goalkeepers. That guy from Wren, I forget his name. Peck? Uh, Peck? Right. Yeah. He kind of dropped out of favor there. Hasn't been starting. You get a guy who has League One level talent, even if he's not a League One starter. You know, they brought him in like with eyes on starting and he fell yeah. out of favor. But I'm sorry. That is like, yes, get him over here. What's that, it take? Like right now, do it. Get him. That's also just telling Yarby. Pick it up, bro. Like, we will get you a good defense, well, but look, it's I also mean, Yarby's in his, you know, he's he's going to be 33 this season, yeah. I think. He's at least 32, you know. He's I think he's old, already he's turned 32. Side, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He's not going to be the keeper forever, even if he's great. I, You know, I I think we said it a couple times. Is it time for the Yarby conversation? And we avoided it. But at a certain point, you do need to have a, a backup plan, plan, right? And Irwin's gone. Abe is not it for a backup. Yeah. Not at the MLS level. I like him. I like what he did. Him talking shit on that Portland penalty is legendary, but that's as far as I want to go. Yeah, I, I just think it's real. It was a really interesting, just little tidbit that we got. This week has been full of little tidbits like that of just like, hey, we got Ronan. Hey, there's Maxo. Hey, there's also a, like the little rumor out there that Linus might like thirty four. Thank you, Joseph. Thirty four. Sorry. Like, but there's also that whole Linus thing where it's like maybe like the Rapids talk to him, which seems really fake. Then two goalkeepers. It feels like Porg's cooking, man. You can really... He feels like the rock. Can you smell what Porg is cooking, dude? Like, <laughs> dude, it's been fun. It's been a fun yeah. week for the Rapids. Um, you know, they have their first preseason match today against a second division Mexican Celaida, side. Yeah. Toro Celaida. Um, and then they'll play Queretaro. 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 Uh, you Yo, you'll learn in Leagues Cup. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get you prepped for that. Look, rolling ours is hard. It is. Um... All right, plug away, my guy. Uh, follow us on all social platforms, DNVR Sports, uh, DNVR underscore sports on Instagram. We also have uh, Rapids content there, here and there. Oh, yeah. Uh, follow us on DNVR underscore Rapids. We post a lot of stuff. We like to have a lot of fun. Uh, reach out to us. Let us know anything you guys want to hear. Uh, Five-star reviews anywhere you hear us, whether it be YouTube, whether it be Spotify, Apple, any of that, please let us know how good we are. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, get your merch from the locker. I got the new Aaron Gordon shirts. I think there's a couple smalls left of the Maxi shirt somehow. Um, if you're <laughs> small and like the Maxi Minor shirt, which I saw courtside on one of those replays last night, someone wearing it courtside. Yeah, that was um, that that was insane on national me. TV. Um, what did what did Jared say? Mitch be like, what what do you say? Oh yeah, Hola, me llamo, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, look, I can. Oh, I can go that far. I can I can drop some kitchen Spanish. Oh yeah, kitchen Spanish is a lot of curse. I can tell yes. It's pretty much all curse words. It's telling it's, people to do things to themselves and mothers and various other and things some, like that. And food and, <laughs> and, and, and food are involved somehow. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um okay guys. That's gonna do it for DNVR rap is this week. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week with another awesome show. Dwayne is doing some mad design work for it. You're gonna love it. But more important than that, and we say it every time, it is up the pits.